Hello everybody and welcome to Riding with Gravity. Hard to believe but I'm coming up on two years now with my Svartpilen 401 and I have the 2022 model so I decided it was time to do my two-year review because it's now been two years with this motorcycle. Pretty much everything that I talked about originally uh, in my one-year review holds true. There's a couple of exceptions. Uh, I'll go through the full review but to just kind of cut right to it. Everything that I said originally holds true. This is a wonderful motorcycle. It's a lot of value uh, for the price point. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I think is different one year later is that uh, after I had my second service, they tightened everything up and it was actually too tight. But a good byproduct of that was that suddenly my quick shifter was working beautifully. And I did a video about this, but in past reviews, I've talked about how the quick, quick shifter is maybe a little garbage sometimes um you know just calibrate it mine was activated from the very beginning it just didn't work great um it, it actually can work pretty well so i have a lot of success with the quick shifter now um, and it's not really about um you know user inputs it's just about making sure that the whole clutch uh, mechanism and everything is just in in spec right um, I, th I think when i got mine uh, had a little bit too much uh slack here and just needed to be tightened up so uh, the quick shifter is actually great and it's wonderful to have a motorcycle at this price point that has a quick shifter for not just you know up but also down you got your adjustable suspension um, just a lot of features ABS uh, great motorcycle right uh, between one year review and two year review have I had any service issues maintenance issues no I have not um, from a reliability standpoint if you're curious about the reliability of this motorcycle I have personally not had any problems. Two years with this motorcycle and what has happened to me? I got a flat tire. Uh, I picked up a nail and so I got a flat tire uh, that was unfortunate but hey I got to know a, a local tow truck company and that was always useful. Um, and then my license plate fell off so I had to get another license plate. Not a huge deal. Otherwise, from a reliability standpoint, I really haven't had any issues. And that's fantastic, right? Um, so I hope you have that same success. Now, obviously, this is the 2022 model. So uh, if you're curious about getting a 2024 or a 2022, I'll be honest, I don't think that you could go wrong with either motorcycle. I love the look and the styling of the older models. So I, you know, I'm probably a little bit biased, but I do love the styling. I think if you get a 2024, you're going to love it. They made some adjustments. You've got the new TFT display on the 2024, which this does not have. And, uh, you know, they've, they've made some adjustments to the tank size, some of the mirror position. Um, so all good things. I think they really listened to what people were saying and made some really great adjustments to this motorcycle uh, moving forward. But the 2022 model love it i did do some mods i'll talk a little bit about the mods but 373 cc engine super peppy um i will do a little ride uh, just to kind of talk a little bit about the riding experience but uh the, the pirellis the scorpions that come on the the motorcycle pretty good um good great on the street i primarily ride on the street uh, this is an urban explorer a city motorcycle generally speaking Great for city riding, I'll explain why. Um, but you can do some lightweight off-roading, and as I said in other videos, like the only thing to consider is just the ground clearance is not great. And, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of clearance here either. Um, so if you're going to do some off-roading, you might want to get the fender up a little bit because you're going to get stuff stuck in there and, you know, it can scrape your tires and I uh, just want to accommodate that. So if you are going to do a lot of off-roading, um, it's not perfectly set up for that. It's just kind of light <laughs> weight off-roading. But great in the city and uh, and it's capable on the highway. Um, you know, very capable on the highway. Uh, you know, from, I'd say, 60 miles per hour up to 85, 90, you get pretty great response. So I never worry about, like, jumping out and passing somebody. Um, once you hit about 90 miles per hour, uh, it's a little bit slower to get from 90 to like 100, but um, most of the streets, you know, highways and stuff, you're not going to be going that fast. So 
uh, perfectly capable. Um, and I'll talk about this when I hop on and ride, but um, just to be aware, obviously, it's a naked bike, no windscreen, pretty lightweight. Uh, you will feel the wind. It's not super stable at highway speeds, but I'm used to it. I'm comfortable with it, and most of my riding actually is uh, like, it's like 50-50 city and highway, so uh, not a big deal, and the bike is perfectly capable. You just probably don't want it for really long rides. I'd say that's the biggest thing, um, and that's a combination of the fact that you will get tired um, if you're at those speeds for a really long time on the highway. And uh, in addition to that, the tank size is a little bit of an inhibitor. So, you know, I want to do it. <laughs> I want to take a nice long ride. I'll just get some, you know, canisters for gas and stuff like that. Um, but let's talk about what I love and some of the gripes about uh, this particular motorcycle. So, uh, complaints. Some people complain about the seat height. Uh, on this 2022, it's 835 millimeters. That's about 33 inches. And I can't flat foot the motorcycle. Um, but even though I can't flat foot the motorcycle, like that was one of my concerns. I have a 30 inch uh, inseam. Um, that was one of my concerns early on. But uh, you'll be fine. Just, you know, get that left foot down really solid. Uh, keep your right foot on the, the brake, the rear brake, you know, and you'll be fine. Uh, just get used to it. I mean, what I did originally was I just got on the bike and then I would put my left foot down. I'd rock over. I'd put my right foot down. I just practiced. Um, get those feet out there nice and wide. Um, if seat height is a concern, uh, just because uh, what you'll tend to do if you try to tippy toe the motorcycle, you're going to bring your legs in and you're going to be tippy toeing. Um, and then guess what? If it starts to go, you're not going to be able to catch that. Um, so there's a good chance that you'll drop your motorcycle. So uh, again, if that's a concern for you, just remember, don't don't get narrow and tippy toe. Um, get Just get one foot out there nice and wide. Make a tripod with the bike. And you'll be perfectly stable. It took me maybe, I don't know, a week to get used to it. Uh, other complaints, tank size, I talked a little bit about that. I get 57 miles per gallon but I've done some mods to the motorcycle. Originally I was getting about 63 miles per gallon. So my range right now, I could probably get 150 miles out of this tank. But to be honest, I probably gas up around the hundred mile mark just to be on the safe side. Um, you know, on highway speeds, you're gonna eat through that gas a little faster um, just cause you're gonna have higher RPMs and so forth. So your range will drop. Um, a little bit. Uh, my my lovely 57 miles per gallon will go down, uh, but right now with mixed riding, still still holding pretty true around there. Now I said it's mostly a city bike, so the real the reality is, um, if you're mostly riding in the city, the tank size is not a super huge concern. There's gas stations, and so access to gas really important. Uh, and I wouldn't expect a huge tank uh, out of. What is generally you know viewed as primarily a ride around in an urban setting motorcycle why is this great for city well uh for one thing the seat height uh, although it might be a concern it's also really great because you're up and you're nice and high so um, this puts you in a really great position to see what's going on around you i did the bar end mirrors uh but uh and i really like that uh, i put these on myself the good thing about these is they're really stable. I still have good visibility for my normal riding, but if I'm on the highway and I'm crouched down a little bit, um, because these are low, uh, they're actually very, very functional on the highway or at higher speeds. So I really like the Barons. Uh, I do think that it was really smart what Husqvarna did with the mirror position. Um, and the reason I say that is, you know, for the city, they're nice and high. And if, uh, if you're a newer rider, uh, you don't have to move your head or your eyes that much to take your eyes off the road and hit those mirrors for visibility. So that can be very good. It's a probably, it's like, you know, a welcoming thing for newer riders. You don't have to look around too much. You want to be focused on the road. Um, but also being nice and high, you do get good visibility. Good for an urban setting. A little bit easier to filter than having these um, on the ends. Um, or be in tight spaces in a city setting. Um, and there's a lot of options for bar ends, so there's some good ones 
Uh, but uh, but anyway, that is a nice position. And also because sometimes this is a really nice bike for entry level or newer riders or returning riders. Um, some of that friendliness of the mirror position also is that if you dropped the bike, you're probably not going to break those mirrors. Whereas if I drop this uh, with a mod that I did, um, you know, probably going to snap off one of those mirrors. But um, it's not just a bike for entry level folks. It's very accessible. Uh, 373 cc's is a it's a fun motorcycle. <laughs> I don't think people understand that. This is a super fun, peppy little motorcycle. So it's a ton of fun, but it's not so much power that you need to be too concerned if you're a newer rider. And if you're not a newer rider, you can squeeze all the power out of this thing and have a blast. <laughs> and that's what I think makes it really fun. It's been two years. And yeah, I talk a lot about upgrading or getting another motorcycle, but I have so much fun on this one that I haven't really bothered. And I love, love, love my motorcycle. Um, <laughs> the only thing I will say about the original mirrors on the vehicle, um, <laughs> they're up here and they kind of were Mickey Mouse-ish in, in their appearance. So the older models, the mirrors were kind of ugly. Obviously that's a style thing, but they were kind of ugly. They did change it a little bit on the newer models, but I like the bar ends. It just lowers the profile, makes it nice and sleek. Um, I originally had it in the ram position down, uh, but I couldn't really see anything, so I uh, had to swap them out. Um, but I do love the look uh, and the style that you get from this. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the display. Not a huge fan of the display. I've talked about that before. Um, but I do like that you can also get some, uh, some good mods for this motorcycle. Obviously, I've been talking about the mirrors. Um, love the grab bar here. If you're a newer rider, one of the things you should love about this bike is it's pretty lightweight. It's a con. <laughs> a negative when you're on the highway because it, it's not as stable but it's a pro when you're in the city because it's light it's flickable it's maneuverable and it's easy to push around so for somebody like me who's smaller in size when I have to move this thing around not a problem um, you know I weigh about 125 pounds so um, you know a big heavy motorcycle is going to be intimidating uh, but you know uh, again, very friendly, easy to maneuver if you're not uh, a larger person. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't care for the display. Um, let me talk a little bit about that. So, here's the deal. Obviously, we don't have the TFD display, and I think what gets me the most, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of contrast, so it doesn't really pop. But the thing is, the longer you're riding this motorcycle, the less you really need the display. So. Okay, I'm just kind of nitpicking a little bit, but what I don't like is if I'm turning left, indicators in the upper left. If I'm turning right, indicators still in the upper left. My ask is really just like, please either put it in the center if there's only going to be one indicator, or if I'm turning right, put a little indicator here, and if I'm turning left, put a little indicator here. It's really frustrating. Um, it's just annoying, especially if I've been driving a car and I hop on this thing. It just, it always throws me when it, it's up in the upper left, uh, but particularly when I'm turning right. So, um, you know, we got the new TFT display. So, um, hey, if you got a newer model, congratulations. I think you're going to love it. Uh, but like I said, this is a super, super fun motorcycle. Um, there's things about it that make it maybe, you know, not perfect for some, but again, uh, you know, if you just want to have fun, you're getting into motorcycling or your experience and you want a, just a really super fun bike, this is a great one. Um, so it does have ABS. You can turn that off, uh, the rear ABS with uh, supermoto mode. The older models really only have supermoto mode and normal, <laughs> and that's fine. Um, works out great. But you can disable that. Probably a good idea if you're going to do some off-roading. Um, and then adjustable suspension, uh, so you can adjust the front forks and uh, the suspension and everything. So it's uh, it's it's got a lot of value, you know. And the quick shifter as well, which I I use a lot now for downshifting, uh, is just great. Uh, this could become a very comfortable and super fun bike. When I'm out running errands, it's really hard for me to stay on task because I just want to ride around, <laughs> and um, and that that kind of for me makes this a perfect motorcycle. 
Uh, so I'm glad that you could take it in with me today. I'm on the Mississippi River. I came down to the Mississippi River. We get to see the sun coming up. It's going to be a beautiful day. And this is just a glorious and beautiful motorcycle. The last thing I'll do before I hop on and talk a little bit about the riding experience is just walk you through a couple of the mods that I did. So I talked about the bar ends. I put a Leo Vince LV10 on. This is the titanium. It shaves 2.54 pounds off the motorcycle. And I was just looking for some, uh, some uh, weight savings, but also the sound. Um, the Leo Vince LV10 is not super loud, but it has a nicer kind of lower growl to it. And that's really what I wanted. I don't want a loud exhaust. I just wanted something that was a little deeper. Um, so I'm really happy with the Leo Vince LV10. Uh, the other mods that are pretty standard are the Fuel X Light and airbox cover and high performance air filters. So yes, I did those as well. Let's take a look. And take the seat off here. The uh, the fuel X light. You're just interrupting the O2 sensor, and then um, sends a signal up here, and it adjusts the fueling on the motorcycle. So stock, these things are pretty lean. Means it, it's uh, this is mostly for you know um, fuel regulations and emissions. Uh, to meet the standards, but uh, they do run a little lean, so they don't, you know, uh, you, you, you could do the Fuel X Lite in and of itself just to get a little bit more of a rich fuel mixture. You'll use just a little bit more gas, but it smooths everything out just really nicely. So um, I definitely recommend the Fuel X Lite, and it adjusts for weather, riding style, modifications, um, and uh, helps uh, just kind of smooth everything out, get the right fuel mixture. This is the uh, the DNA Stage 2 high performance air filter. Uh, this is the air box cover, and so this is what replaces that hard plastic cover. And then below that, I put in the KNN high performance air filter. Those two air filters and the Fulex combined makes this super peppy motorcycle even more peppy. If you do all three, you're going to notice a difference, and and you'll you'll smile even wider. <laughs> you'll have a lot more fun. You'll be on the road longer. Um, you'll always be concerned about the tank size because you're like, oh my god, I, I just need to go a little bit more and then you're going to have to gas up. So, uh, just super, super fun. Love it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I've thought about other mods, but I'm just kind of holding out for a little while. Um, and, uh, you know, two years, no issues, and a ton of fun. I, I can't say anything more than that. Um, I'm going to hop on now and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the riding experience itself. See you in a bit. Welcome back to Riding with Gravity. I want to talk a little bit about the riding experience on the Spark Pillin 401. And again, mine is a 2022. Great model. Uh, as I said, it's really peppy. Uh, it was really peppy in the stock configuration too. A little bit more jerky. And of course, I did the Fulex Light, and that smooths it out. So at, at, at lower speeds, what that really means is um, it's helping to manage the fuel. And because the bikes run kind of lean, uh, it's just giving it enough gas that you, you just you get a rid of some of that jerkiness that you normally have. Um, so it's going to feel a lot smoother. Hard to describe, but you know you get the basic point. Um, now that being said, it's still, you know, I, I rode it through the stock position all the way up to the first service and then I did a bunch of mods. Uh, but I had a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's got plenty of power for the kinds of riding that I do and as an urban explorer for the city. But you can lean into it and you can certainly have a decent amount of fun. Um, one time um, I just accidentally scraped my pegs and I was not expecting it, but uh, it was a lot of fun and, you know, we're talking city riding, so not super fast speeds. It's safe, controlled environment, but still a lot of fun. I mean, nice to get on your edges, and um, and it, it can deliver, especially in the city, a really fun experience. Just being able to let it loose when you want to. Um, so a lot of fun. Uh, you'll hear people say it's very flickable. It handles really well. Yeah, it does. Um, it, it, it handles extremely well, and I think, you know, 
again when I'm when I'm talking city riding and urban settings like this uh, just putzing along a river road like I am right now um, it's great um, the Pirelli Scorpion tires uh, are they're fine for the city um, you know I've I've ridden on some gravel and stuff and and I really appreciate the fact that I've got a, a decent tire uh, I probably will replace these with something different that's just more of a city focused tire because I don't really do very much off-roading I think I've been off-road like twice <laughs> and uh, and so like you know it's just not um, not my primary way of riding and because that's the case I'm just gonna get a more city focused tire but this is what I mean by you want to have fun on a bike um, well there you go I mean it handles really really well part of that is just um, the way that it's built it's very lightweight um, it's meant to be the type of motorcycle that you can just easily maneuver um, certainly the case so if you find yourself in the city and you're gonna be uh, doing a lot of uh, a lot of lane shifting and swerving to get around things and, and whatnot uh, just you're gonna really find that this is a, a, a bike that will accommodate you for that situation it's good at many things, so I don't want to I don't want to specify that this is a city bike, uh, urban settings, but it certainly thrives and shines in that. Um, I'm in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, and so for me, when I'm riding around, um, what I get is a scenario where I can basically go on the highway. I can go on city streets and, and I have fun doing any and all of those things. And I'll talk about the highway experience next. But it's just got, this, you know, again for urban riding too, just, just enough of that pickup and joy factor that when you just give it a go, it'll go for you and bring a smile to your face. So I just, I can't say how much fun it is in in that situation right all right so let's hop on the highway now and I'll talk a little bit about what it's like on the highway so getting on the highway now I love my bar end mirrors because my bar end mirrors quite frankly they give me really good visibility in the city but when I crouch down on the highway they're nice and low and so I actually they're very usable on the highway um, I never worry about you know speed getting onto the highway you've got more than enough pickup and I hit about 86 miles per hour just getting on and merging and now I can go back to cruising speed um, and I, I do that just to show you uh, depending on the speed of traffic and you know this is miles per hour I can get up to 86 miles per hour on the on-ramp like I did back there um, no problem at all so I don't worry about getting up to speed speed is not a concern um, I'll say that once you hit about 90 miles per hour uh, it's gonna take you a little bit longer or at least it does for me <laughs> if you wanted to go faster and hit like a hundred um, 90 to 100 it's it just takes a little while um, but it's not like I'm gonna be doing that very often right um, for the most part here I am I'm cruising at 60 miles per hour looking out over the river the Sun just rose and so you can see some some fog and uh, and whatnot uh, it's just a beautiful morning I don't I don't have to do anything other than this I can just cruise at 60 64 miles per hour and enjoy myself I feel the wind a lot so I, I do feel the wind quite a bit you get used to it but again lightweight bike naked bike no windscreen you're gonna feel that it's a little bit better if you want to crouch down really low sure fine okay uh, I have done that in super windy conditions just to try to get a, as far out of the wind as I possibly can but I mean I'm very comfortable right now and um, you know it's not a big deal now there's not very much traffic uh, this time of the day 
but even in high traffic situations, um, this is a nice, uh, a nice riding experience. And you sit pretty high up, uh, which is good in the city because you can see over things um, on the highway. Uh, similarly, I have good visibility if I want it, and I can certainly crouch if I want to get out of the wind a little bit more. But like I said, you get used to it. Um, and I do like the bar and mirrors for the highway experience just because I can just glance over to that mirror and I can see what's going on uh, next to me and so forth, right? So um, from that standpoint, again, uh, I would say among the mods that you can do, Fuel X Lite um, certainly is, is a great one. As I mentioned, I, I did the performance air filters, the KNN and the DNA high performance air filters. Um, that also certainly makes a difference. You just get a little bit more power out of the motorcycle. And so the peppy becomes even more peppy. That's all wonderful. And, um, and then, you know, you're in a good position where, you know, at, at high speeds, I'm not even, I don't even really have to put much weight on the handlebar, it's just very comfortable. Um, now I'm, I'm more used to it. What I wouldn't do is, uh, I, I wouldn't wanna do a really, really long trip. I, I do intend to do that because it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm gonna do it anyway, but uh, I will tell you that, you know, probably in, in terms of, you know, thinking about, well, um, what if I wanted to do a longer trip? you're not gonna be as comfortable as you would on a touring bike, right? Um, you know, it's not as stable at, at, at that, those speeds and with the wind and everything. Um, it's just the reality that you, you have to deal with when uh, you're comparing a motorcycle that is a scrambler to something that is intended to be a touring bike, right? And that's just an important, uh, that's just an important distinction. So all in all, let me just uh, get off the bike here and give you one last look at her. All in all, it's a fantastic motorcycle. I have so much fun riding this motorcycle. And, you know, after two years, uh, it's, it's almost two years to the date now. Um, I haven't really had any issues. Like I said, I, I caught a flat tire. I lost the license plate. I've got a little bit of rust uh, in some places, but... I've been using some solution to kind of treat that. I don't really see any other spots that have gotten too bad. Um, so overall, it's held up really, really well for me. I've never had any, you know, breakdowns and I'm doing the basics. I'm cleaning the chain, doing the oil change uh, when I need to and taking it in for servicing and then just slowly taking on a little bit more maintenance here and there as I go. It needs a bath, <laughs> but uh, but other than that, uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful motorcycle, and uh, for me, it's been uh, just a ton of fun. And I hope that you, uh, if you're a you know if you're a smart pill owner, I hope you share the same passion that I do, and just love this motorcycle. If you're looking for a motorcycle, if you're a new rider, this is this is safe enough, I'd say, as an entry level motorcycle. Not so much power that you're going to be. Uh, that you need to be too concerned, uh, but enough power that you can have fun for a long time, like I am in, in year two, still just, you know, <laughs> just having a blast on this thing. Um, and that's what I wanted. I didn't want something that was less powerful because I knew I would get bored with it at some point and outgrow it, so to speak. Um, I wanted something that would grow with me a little bit longer. And uh, this certainly has. Enjoy, have a lot of fun, ride safe out there, and thank you for following. I appreciate y'all.